Hello, my name is Nestor Sherman. I'm a psychiatrist and I'm living and working in Madrid, Spain. I'm working at the Gregorio Marañón University Hospital in the same city in, in Madrid. And currently I'm serving as president of the WDD, the World Association of Dual Disorders, Addiction and Other Mental Disorders. Dual disorder is an arbitrary term, like others in psychiatry. That may mean nothing. However, it allows mental health professionals to identify people suffering from addiction and other mental disorders. According to epidemiological studies and meta-analysis, uh, more than 75% of patients suffering from severe mental disorder, they also suffer another mental disorder, such as substance use disorder or addictive disorder. In terms of substances, there are main substances to be considered. Tobacco, alcohol, cannabis, stimulants and opioids. The most frequent substance in people with mental disorder is, of course, tobacco. In people with oil, it's the most frequent substance in all sorts of mental disorder, especially in people with chronic psychotic disorder, major affective disorders, and ADHD. It is interesting to know there are sex differences. For example, stimulant addiction is much more prevalent in males than females. The reason is that considering the evolutionary perspective and biological differences between the sexes, males are more often impulsive than females. People with high impulsivity are more vulnerable to stimulant addictions. First, it should be noted that the substances bind to endogenous brain systems, such as the opioid system, cannabinoid endogenous system or cholinergic nicotinic system. These brain systems are involved in mental functioning. These substances bind to receptors in these neurobiological systems acting as psychotropic drugs, like medication in the brain. If a person suffers from a mental disorder and therefore these systems are dysfunctional, the use of substances could be a kind of self-medication. So people could develop compulsive use and addictive disorder. This is the chicken or the egg debate. <laughs> Although this debate, like others in science, is a topic of controversy, there is evidence of a bidirectional relationship. There is also evidence that in the brain of a person with mental disorders, this brain changes long before mental symptoms are expressed the long road of neurodevelopment. These people discovered to trial and error that substances alleviate their symptoms and develop an addiction in dual disorders. For example, schizophrenia and tobacco use disorder. In this case, nicotine improves the hyperconnectivity that these people with chronic psychosis have. This effect is different in other people without psychosis. Every substance uh, makes a effect, different effect on the brain. The more easy example is uh, we are giving amphetamines for children with ADHD. This effect of an amphetamine is different in children without ADHD. When patients go to a care facility and request help, for example, due to addictive disorder or another mental disorder such as depressive episode, we should ask ourselves, what else? And it is in that question where the, the dual disorders appears. high prevalence of substance use disorder in people with other mental disorders makes it reasonable to explore the assertion that both conditions are in some ways causally linked. A study based, based on genetic studies, GWAS study, genome-wide association studies meta-analysis, are starting to identify a group of genes associated with a high risk of substance use disorder, other mental symptoms and mental disorders. Therefore, we have evidence of the genetic overlap of some addictions and other mental disorders. This genetic background gives rise to neurobiological circuits and systems that favor the expression of symptoms of both addiction and other mental disorder, which is what we call dual disorder. Treatment should be always biopsychosocial in this order and must start with the biological. To do this, it's necessary to diagnose mental states 
mental symptoms or syndromes of the dual disorders condition. The treatment paradigm for people suffering from uh, dual disorders is called harm reduction. We prefer another terms instead of harm reduction, such as substitution therapy or replacement therapy. I'm going to give you some examples. For methadone or buprenorphine, we are using these drugs in people suffering from uh, opioid use disorder. But these drugs are also improving some other mental symptoms, such as psychotic symptoms or suicidal ideation or another symptoms. Or nicotine replacement therapy are improving cognition in people suffering from psych psychosis, for example. And let us remember new treatments such as neuromodulation with deep TMS transmagnetic stimulation that is approved, for example, in the US by the FDA for a treatment for tobacco use disorder in short term. Or psychodysleptic, uh, such as psilocybin, magic mushroom, people say, for depression or OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, but also for alcohol use disorder. Or GLP-1 agonist like semaglutide, may improve also alcohol use disorder and according to the first uh, research and binge drinking. Withdrawal syndrome is not only a physiological syndrome, but sometimes the abrupt cessation of the use, the use of substance can cause on a worsening of the mental symptoms. For example, in people who suffer from opioid disorder and, and psychotic uh, chronic disorder, when the, these people interrupt the use of uh, opioid use uh, or methadone maintenance therapy, they can suffer a new psychotic episode. Uh, this is the reason why the abrupt cessation sometimes is not the best solution. Cessation of a, a substance use uh, an extended period of time is a good indicator that the person with dual disorders has achieved biological, psychological, and social stabilization. However, this usually means that the person is maintaining prolonged treatment, including substitution therapy with the medication. En attendant d'autres contenus, abonnez-vous à la chaîne ou rendez-vous directement sur le site maddigital.fr.